Welcome back to the Candy Colored Studio. I'm artist Katrina Berg. This is episode 191. We're going to talk about website tips for artists, commission bonuses, and a Dr. Zev Zelenko red pill. So they say third time's the charm. So I'm really hoping that things are going to kind of like get all the kinks out today. So I, like I said last week, I'm using this new platform. So those of you that went to watch the visual version on YouTube, I apologize. I have now figured out how to merge the tracks. So it should be good. I did update that episode. If you want to go back and actually see the screen shares, you can do that. Um, but that's, <laughs> it's just the way things go, I guess. So, okay. So first of all, I just wanted to remind you that this will be a visual version. Like it would be best if you watched it. Cause I'm going to be showing lots of art and some other things. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen. So I guess the first thing that I would say, there are three places to watch my episodes. If you want to watch the visual versions, the first one is my website and I'm just going to share this and actually walk it, walk you through it. Let's see. Okay. So here's my website. And if you go to the top, you can see the tab that says podcast, you click on podcast and then you will have a whole bunch of stuff start to pop up. It's taking a second to load, but, um, I will put, I will just embed the episode, the visual, episode right here on my podcast tab. Um, there's also links to other episodes. There's usually pictures, there's all kinds of stuff. And you can just click on whichever episode you want to watch, or you want to actually go to the, the podcast episode. Like for example, this one says episode 190, you click on the actual title, not the video, but the title, and it will take you to the page. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I guess it doesn't do that. Okay. Let me take you to another one and then I'll fix it after my, after I record this. So this is from a couple weeks ago when I talked about, um, more commission stuff, but you can see there's pictures, there's the video version, there's the audio version, all the links. And then I had mentioned some other episodes. And so you can actually listen to those episodes right there on the page. So that's how you do it. If you want to go directly from my website, if you want to go to YouTube again, you just go to my YouTube channel and I will put a link to that in the show notes. And then the last place that you can actually listen and watch my episodes, the visual version is here in Spotify. And I will tell you, I have two different accounts now <laughs> in Spotify for the podcast. The original one you will find has my candy colored studio, the logo, and there's like a little, there's just a portrait of me that you've probably seen. But if you want to see the visual version, so again, that's just audio. If you want to see the visual version, then you want to click on the candy colored studio that shows a painting. And the way that, that I'm going to try to remember is that it's a visual version. And so therefore I'm showing you a visual picture of my painting. I don't know if that's going to help, but you can actually see art in that one. So that's how, you know, so we'll close those. Um, okay. So in the studio, a little update for you. I have been working on this piece called Adriana and I may, I think I even played the song a few episodes back, but it is all finished and I went ahead and varnished it and I got this gorgeous Todd Orchard gold leaf frame. It's so stunning. Like the top of the frame is a little bit rounded and has these great ribs. Anyways, it's awesome. I don't even know if that's the proper name for it, but there you go. There's a little visual, but that is a floral. It's got a couple tropical birds, some orchids and daffodils and some daisies. And then of course a chinoiserie vase. And it's very, 
how do I say this? Like the background is all like really light kind of neutral colors. And I used to paint like really light pastels, like strict pastels back in the day, but it was like totally ahead of its time. And people were still using brown all over their house. And so they weren't ready for it, but I think people are ready for it now. So there it is. Um, I got it in the frame, got it varnished and cute. Amy stopped by yesterday from Beljar and she's like, can I take this? So if you want to see this one in person, person, go to Beljar and Heber. I will link to their address in the show notes. I'll show you a couple other pictures of this piece. Here's just a fun detail from when I was just getting started. And I've got some detail shots. There's a detail. There's another one with the birds and the daffodils. Oh, that one's upside down. <laughs> Anyways, we've got some upside down pictures, but, um, those are some details that we've got. Um, I love this one. Anyways, like I said, the taupe, taupe, really light taupe background. And then the floor is basically a creamy white. So I love that one. It's, it's very exciting. I'm very excited about it as you can tell. Okay. And then the next thing I need to tell you about Many of you have probably heard the episodes that I did with the authors, MacArthur Krishna and Bethany Spaulding, who wrote, um, let's see, help me out here. This is terrible. This is what happens when your brain goes. Look at all that gorgeous stuff of MacArthur. Oh, A Girl's Guide to Heavenly Mother. <laughs> and they, they have two versions of it. One for girls, obviously girl's guide. And then they did create a boy's guide. Um, here's a picture of that. Anyways, I do have one of my Heavenly Mother pieces in the book, along with amazing, amazing LDS artists who've done lots of different depictions of Heavenly Mother. But the book truly is a trove of knowledge and just a really good like jump start into building a relationship with your Heavenly Mother and understanding more about her. So if you haven't listen to those episodes. I will link to them or I'll actually embed them. I'll go ahead and embed them in the show notes for this episode. And you can listen right there, but um, it's excellent. So going back, MacArthur Krishna is, she started um, working on a film project. I don't know, six months ago, she told me about it. Well, it's completed and they're going to go ahead and launch it this weekend. The hope is that it launches Friday. Um, but for sure next week, when we come on the podcast, I will have a link to it. I'll embed it in the show notes and everything and you can watch it. But if you want to keep an eye out, um, MacArthur's Instagram is MacArthur Krishna underscore creates. And of course I will have a link to that in the show notes and you can just kind of keep an eye on it. She'll probably put the link in her profile as soon as it launches, but again, it should be on YouTube. Friday is the goal. So that's the update on that. And then let's see here. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is our artist tip for the week. So let's talk about websites for artists. And I think it's such an interesting topic because there's so many things that you could do, like so many directions that you can go with your website. And I think that's really, really awesome. Um, but I would say that there's always, it's always a good thing to like re- I don't know, just take a, a fresh look at your website, listen to different suggestions and like pick one or two that you think that would, you, that would really help elevate your website. Well, this recent episode by the Artist Soar podcast, and, and it's the three wonderful ladies, Stephanie Weaver, Rachel Harchanko, and Jules McCullough. And they are amazing. They have such a fun, fun podcast artist soar. And I'm actually showing it right now on Spotify, but their latest episode is episode 29. And they talk about like the title is why artists need a website and what are some considerations when putting one together? And they do such a good job. I thought they had so many great suggestions. In fact, I'm just going to read to you some of their talking points um, just so that I don't miss some. But for example, they said, yes, you need a website. And I couldn't agree with them more. I think it's probably the most valuable thing that I have as an artist is my very own website that people can go wherever they are and just check and see what's, what's going on in the studio. Um, they talked about an artist as a portfolio or excuse me, an artist website is a portfolio. 
They talk about quick websites that you can set up and having your own website helps you just captivate your audience. So they're not getting distracted. They talked about Etsy. It's really easy for you to go into Etsy and be looking for one thing. And then two hours later, you're looking, you've looked at like 200 different things. So I love that one. Um, they had examples of some really great websites. They also talk about how owning your own website is important because then it can like be a perfect example of you and your work. And I thought that was great. And again, there's so many good tips on here. They talk about just what to consider once you have a website, image, image things, watermarks, um, disabling the right clicking. I mean, anyways, lots of little details. If you like all that stuff, you will love that website. I promise you'll come away with something that you can do to kind of just elevate your website where it is right now. Um, okay. So there's that. I'm going to unshare for a second. Okay. And we're back. So today is the fourth episode in this mini series about commissions. And if you've missed any of the others, I'll go ahead and link to them in the show notes, but it's just the previous three episodes. I talked about it and this is, these are the ideas that I came up with, but if you have other topics or questions related to commissions, just email me k at katrinaberg.com. And I would be more than happy to address any of your questions or thoughts um, about more topics on commission. So feel free to just email me. I'd be happy to, to do that. But again, I feel like there's so many things we can talk about with commissions and I think it's really a good thing to consider. So today we're going to talk about the power of commissions, like the bonuses, the extra things that come from accepting commissions. And these are things that just organically I started finding and discovering. And I just, I love that about commissions. So I think one of the first things that I thought about when I was thinking about commissions and the, the benefits and the bonuses that have come, the first thing is that I've started new series just because of commissions. Like somebody will suggest, hey, have you ever considered doing bumblebees? I'm like, oh, sure, yeah, I can do some bumblebees. Or would you do a specific, you know, and they give you like specific things that they're thinking about and you can ask yourself, is this something I wanna do? And then once you do it, you realize, oh, I loved this, I need to do more. And that's totally what happened with the bumblebees for me. Then I did butterflies. I mean, all kinds of fun little portraits. Um, I think I did dragonflies. I don't know, lots of things. And, um, and I'll just kind of talk you through some of the commissions I've done and how it kind of evolved into just really, I don't know, deepening my portfolio, I guess, and just also helping me on my journey. So I feel like it's an opportunity for a new creative adventure. And I feel like as I've taken them, it's totally just expanded my view of how just one more way that I can take my candy colored style and thick paint and just this stained glass view and just show it different subjects, right? Another thing that I found that's really been beneficial is that it's helped me with the scale. So I feel like some people really need smaller pieces. And so I learned how to paint smaller pieces and then I got brave and started painting bigger pieces. And so I'll kind of talk you through some of these, but I think too, it's a great way to try out new materials, try out new methods that you've always wanted to do, but you just have never got around to it. Commissions are a great time to explore and try that and to decide if it's something you really want to add to your portfolio and just have in your series on a regular basis. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again and we will look at some of these and I'll just kind of talk you through some of the concepts. Okay, so um, I wanna start out with my dear friend Kelly. So I did this piece for Kelly, we decided we wanted to do an epic trade. So Kelly has moved to Philadelphia and I was devastated and I still am because I love Kelly and Alan so much. But before she went, she just decided that she wanted to trade with as many artists as possible. And trading is such a good way to collect art as an artist. And you don't have to be an artist to trade with artists. Like, obviously I've told you about my friend, Shaleen, who's the hairstylist. I have interior designer friends and we've traded all like whatever it is that they do, whatever their specialty is, we've totally done that. Well, 
Kelly wanted to do a trade and we thought it would be really awesome to do an epic trade. So we did. We, um, so she did this gorgeous portrait of my kids. I don't have it like right off the bat, like ready. I should have thought about that, but I'll have to, I'll have to put it in the show notes. I'll put Kelly's painting that she did this portrait of our five children. And it's, it's absolutely wonderful. We love it so much. And then I decided to paint one the same size, which is a four foot by four foot. And she wanted a floral, but she wanted the background to be navy. And I had never done a navy background before. And I went ahead and got going on it. And oh, you guys, and not just any navy. She wanted a rich, dark, midnight blue, almost black navy. And it was so much fun. I really... I, I've got some pictures of um, Kelly and Alan when we first traded. I'll have to go find those. Maybe I can put those in the show notes too. But that was so much fun. And what happened was that number one, I loved painting that. But then also I... I found that there were a lot of people that were like, I need one of those. And so that was really fun. So it basically it started a new series for me. It got me really brave to paint a large floral. Like I'd never painted a floral that big before. And I realized there was a need for these large florals. I had no idea that people wanted huge paintings of florals. And apparently they do. And I love painting them. So it has really made such a difference in my life as an artist. I feel like I've been able to just go in a direction that I always wanted to, but I didn't know there was a need for it. So as you can see, I started doing more really big florals. This particular one has a gorgeous frame and it's obviously got the navy background and a lighter. It's, it's more of like a jean blue. I don't know denim blue as the foreground and the floor. And then I actually added some birds. So you can kind of see where I, another thing that happened with these commissions was that I started getting brave enough to start combining all the series that I've been working on over the past 14 years, which is so fun. And so I started taking like the still lifes and the portraits of birds and animals and then of course the florals and putting them all together. And so that, that has been such a bonus with doing these commissions. Here's another one. This one I got even braver, the waiting place. This is such an amazing, oh, I loved the journey of this piece. It was so special. And the collector that bought it, she's like one of my favorite people in the whole world. Um, she's just an amazing person. And this particular piece is all about that waiting place that we that we tend to be in as women. And we're trying to figure out who we are and where we're going. And there's all these things that represent us. And so this particular piece has, here, I'll show you some of the details. Oh, this this picture shows the shine. And I think that's another, another amazing thing about doing these large commissions and big paintings, getting brave enough to do the big paintings. You really start to get an impact from the idea of this whole stained glass idea. So here's some details. Like I have the little ring that represents, you know, obviously marriage, eternity, um, just what we're committing to in life. And of course the flowers all have meanings too. I've got the fruit. What are the fruit? What's the fruit of our labors? We've got a caterpillar representing that we are becoming, we are going to become something, but it's a process. Um, I also had obviously some birds that I love and there's a key that represents all kinds of things. It can unlock more parts of your life. It can rep represent keys, like as in a, a spiritual aspect, there's lots of different things that the key can represent. Um, the butterfly, obviously I had a caterpillar and then there's the butterfly. There was a ribbon in there somewhere. I'm trying to think there's probably a few other things. Anyway, so that amazing piece led to others. In fact, this is another commission. Um, they wanted another deep, dark background. In fact, in this one, I was given paint swatches and fabric swatches and paint chips, like everything that I needed to make sure that it fit in this particular room, in this particular space. This one's a large oval and they measured exactly how they wanted it to fit on the wall. And so this oval is a little bit different than some of the others that you may have seen me do, because I feel like it's, um, 
It's a little bit stockier. I don't know how to explain it, but it was the exact dimensions that they wanted. So Todd made this amazing board and it has a chinoiserie vase, has some birds that represent family members in their family and grandkids. Uh, the butterflies represent the grandkids. And it was just a really, really fun piece to do. Then there's some fairy wren that represent the collectors themselves. So that was a good one. I felt like I kind of got into a new phase of comfort with these large florals. And that's really, really another great thing about commissions is that it just pushes you and helps you find this like comfort level and confidence. And that was so fun. So here's just a few details. Oh, here's another one. This one, another amazing collector has this one. And I love this one. I've got some really bright red poppies. I let them just kind of like just overtake and just brighten up against that navy background. And then there's one solo hummingbird. And that was really fun as well. So again, another chinoiserie vase. I feel like I really tapped into the chinoiserie vase and how I wanted to portray those with this particular piece. Um, here's some more details with the thick paint. Here it is in the frame in my studio. And this is another really awesome one that I'm just in love with. In fact, this piece is at Beljar. It's called My Favorite Things. I've talked about it here on the podcast, but it is a special piece and it's still available. You can buy it at Beljar in Heber City. And of course, you can email me if you need help, but I will link to them as well. And then here's some like more pictures of that particular piece, but you can tell I, I started hiding things in the beginning, but then there came a point with this piece, I wanted the birds to be more of a center focus. And I wanted to pull them out of, instead of hiding amidst all the branches, I wanted them to be front and center. And so I've got the starling birds there, and then there are still some hidden fairy wren and hummingbirds and butterflies. But this is this, you can kind of see the evolution in, in the adventure that has happened because of these commissions. There's a detail of the starlings. Okay, and this brings us to um, my latest navy background piece. And this particular piece is called Our Love is Here to Stay, named after the song by Emily Claire Barlow. You guys know I absolutely adore her. And this particular piece, it's a 48-inch circle, and it is... I've been working on it for a while. It's taken a little while, um, but I'm so excited about it because again, I just pulled the birds out again, made sure that they were a focal point. This particular photo, you can see my eight-year-old big twin. He is standing right next to the piece so you can kind of get an idea of scale. And with this one, I really wanted to focus, like a lot of times with florals, I like, it's very, um, oh gosh, very whimsy and there's a lot of movement and it's almost soft and cascading with the flowers. But this one, I wanted it to be more architectural. And so these uh, branches of the cherry blossoms are actually really rigid and I love that. And so it just feels like there's a little bit more structure and that's really fun too, but there's plenty of whimsy in there. There's some sunflowers. There's lots of birds. Taggart counted 13 birds uh, between the two in the vase, the chinoiserie vase, and then 11 that are in the branches and in the foreground. And there's starlings and fairy wren and hummingbirds and some tropical birds. Anyways, it's it's we've really had a fun time with this piece. This is actually a picture of Taggart mixing the paint. So he, he's kind of my most uh, avid studio assistant right now. And that's always fun to include them in these commissions to be able to include the kids. He's actually mixing up an epic amount of navy paint right now in this picture. And he loved it. He said, Mom, it's so satisfying. <laughs> and here's another view. I have a video and I'm not sure. Oh, this is it. Let me see if it'll... You can kind of watch him mixing the paint. And again, it was a lot of fun. I would mix a little and let him mix a little, but I mean, it's a lot. I probably need to get a bigger tool or palette knife just for when I mix these really, really huge blobs of 
navy paint, but we had a good time together, Taggart and I. So here is an overview photo that I took just this morning. I actually finished the piece last night and something that you may not realize, I love to start these big ones out on my easel, but there's a point where it's easier for me to actually finish the background with a pal with the palette knife on my table. And so I finished it last night. And so I stood up on my table and took this picture for you, but you can see um, the lighting's not perfect, but it gives you an idea until it's dry enough that I can take some better pictures. And then here are some close-ups. Here are the starlings with a little sunflower next to them. Here's kind of a close-up of the vase. And we've got close-ups of all the little birds. Oh, you guys, this piece was so fun. So fun. Lots of daffodils. There's a protea, some berries. And obviously I mentioned the cherry blossoms. And we've got fairy wren. Anyways, fun, fun stuff. These last two pictures I wanted to add just because it, the deer in our yard, they've been hanging out right next to the windows again. It makes me so happy, but you can see the deer while I was working on this piece. I've got two pictures of it just right there. So fun. And there you can see a little bit of another deer behind the plant, but I just know it's there. You probably don't know it's there. Okay. So I talked about how doing these commissions gave me the courage to do bigger pieces in this in this particular subject. So one of the first really big florals I did after Kelly's was uh, Le Premier bon Bonheur du Jour. And that is a, it's almost like an aqua blue background floral. There's a lot of negative space. But again, I was just trying to work out these compositions with these big pieces. And I, this was a really, really fun piece to do. And of course, it was one of the first frames that Todd made for me, these really big circle frames. So the piece itself is a 48 inch, but then with the frame, it's just less than five inches, which is just barely shorter than I, which is a big deal. So like I mentioned before, this show, this actual piece that I just showed you that I finished last night, it's going to be the first of a series going to Alpine Art and Frame in Salt Lake. And I'm going to be doing a solo show. It's called Bigger is Better. And um, it's, I'm so excited. It's going to be, everything has to be bigger than 48 inches. I'm going to do some that are diptychs. Um, I'm going to have some huge ovals and circles, and then some really big ones, just regular frame rectangle squares. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm, I'm just excited to share with you. So go ahead. If you're not on my email list already, go ahead and get on there and you'll start seeing like peaks of all the pieces. But like I said, I finished the first one. And so I'm really excited about this show. And I can honestly say that without these commissions, I would have never been prepared to do something like this. So I'm really excited. This particular piece, photo again is that same piece in our dining room and it doesn't look particularly huge but it it really fills up that wall and I love it um then the sunflowers I recently did a, just a total sunflower piece and this one is actually available as well I just brought it home so it's in my studio if you want to come see it in person and I actually had a collector come over last week and she reminded me how everything looks so much better in person and she's totally right these photos do not do it justice I try to get side and angles so you can see all the shine and the texture but you just have to come and enjoy it touch it feel it like take it in for yourself so feel free to call me and make an appointment to come see these. So this sunflower piece is a nod to Van Gogh. I talked about it a little more in a previous episode, but it's a special piece. And like I said, it's still available. It's a 30 by 40 with a really big frame. So it's going to, it's going to create a nice space for you. Um, here's the last one I'm going to show you is just, again, a Navy background one that we talked about, and it's just on the easel. So you can see that. Okay. So let's look at the next group that I wanted to kind of talk about with commissions are these French storefronts. So when I went back in 2018 and I got to go painting in France with some artists, I, I just had had this desire to do some storefronts. And so I kind of waited until I got there. And then I took as many pictures as I could while I was in Paris. And this was one of the first ones that I did while I was there. Um, just this sweet little 
Blue Door, and obviously it must have been like a little cheese and wine shop, vin et fromage, it said across the top. And anyways, it just gives you a little idea. And that was just a tiny piece. And then I did another tiny piece, just kind of working out these storefronts. And then when we went back in February of 2019 as a family, I painted a couple while we were there. And that was really fun too. So this one is Zazen. And I think it's kind of a contemporary interior shop, but it gives you kind of like that, that classic Parisian storefront with the contemporary vibe. And it's just so awesome. So I feel like this is where I really started to get into my groove with these commissions. You can see some of the details, pops of orange and navy and the flowers on the windows. Then I also did this one, Mart, and this is an amazing, <laughs> an amazing chocolate and sweet shop in Paris. Again, we've got a front, really fun storefront window with all the treats and all the pastries right there. And of course we have their, their name on, on it and everything. So I tried to make it as authentic as possible to what I saw when I was there. Um, and then I came back and started painting more storefronts. This is one of them on an oval, which presented its own adventure and challenges, but that was really fun. And then that kind of brought me to do a whole series for another, a couple, a uh, interior designer in basically the South. And that was fun. So I did a group of storefronts for her. And then during the summer, when we were doing our plein air here in Midway, I decided I would paint June pie. Um, I love Tammy and her June pie. She's a good friend. And also she obviously has changed our Valley and just really made such a difference, like showed us all how to do different things with business. I've talked about her in other episodes, but she's amazing. So this is her little a storefront photo, storefront painting of her original June pie space. Well, I guess it first was in her house. Then this was her first like actual space, like commercial space. And then now she has a huge space in Heber. So, okay. So then this one I did about the same time and it's Lola's and we love Lola's. Lola's is on main street in Midway and they have artisanal, just like really, really good local food. Um, just excellence. And they always fly a flag around the 4th of July. And I just had to paint that with their cute black and white umbrellas and shutters. And they did such a good job fixing up this particular building when they moved into it. And it's just been amazing. So that was really fun. And what was great was that, you know, I painted these and then they both wanted to buy them, which was really fun. It's, I, it's one of those things that it usually the owner loves it the most. So that was really fun. And then when I went to Scotland, the end of 2019, I made sure to do a storefront of a cashmere shop. And then all of these kind of like just figuring it all out kind of led to a Paris basically a Paris series for La Petite Maison Antique. And as soon as I started doing these Eiffel Towers with the carousels, I found there were people that had been to that exact same spot that we had been when I took the pictures. And so all of a sudden everyone wanted their own version of it. So I did a couple versions for La Petite and then I did some more for some friends and collectors. And when this particular photo hit Instagram was when people really started to go crazy. But this one was for my dear friend, Christina. And again, this cute pink car is one that she saw when she was actually at Notre Dame. So that was really fun. And so after I did these two pieces for her, then a cute gal reached out to me who's also an artist and she wanted me to do one from her trip to London and Big Ben. So that was really a fun piece. And I actually love this piece. It's so fun. I had the best time doing it. That was one of my favorite commissions. So again, doing these landscapes and storefronts or just architectural drawings from other places. It's something that I've always wanted to do. And doing these commissions has really helped me do that. This is another one that I did for La Petite Maison, another storefront, La Mer de Famille. And this is a really fancy grocery store that's famous in Paris. And it's just absolutely enchanting. So this is an incredible place, but that was a fun one to do as well. And then another thing that I wanted to do in that Paris series was start doing these map tracks. And I had done map tracks years before, but I had never done, 
I think I did one in Paris maybe, but I wanted to do a whole series of them. So there were some kind of different sizes and that was really fun. And obviously then I had a friend um, ask me to do some more of a specific area of Paris that she had stayed in. So that was fun. And then it led to Chalene and her amazing storefront, her little Paris salon. And I did an episode that was in my previous episode, just number 190. You can go and hear more details about Chalene and that particular piece, which was so fun to do. And again, we tied in a lot of fun things that just made me so happy. And then because of all these, you know, doing all these little Paris pieces for people and other places that they love, I was brave enough to start doing some bigger um, landscape and architectural paintings. This one is um, the L'Arc de Triomphe. And this one, I believe, is still available. It's at La Petite Maison Antique. And again, I will leave links to that. You can check it out. Here's some details of the piece. Uh, of course, when we were there, the flag was flying strong and that was awesome. So it was really fun to capture the flag. Here is a bigger map track. So once I sold all these smaller ones and commissions, then I started doing a bigger one. And this particular piece I actually have in my home. And so if you want to come and check it out again, it's a 16 by 20 and it's, it's a very, very large part of Paris, like all the main spots, the main spots that we like to go when we're there. So that's a really fun one. It has the Seine basically going right through the middle of it. So it's a lot of fun. Here's some more details of that really big map abstract. You can kind of see, I always put stars to represent like the, you know, the really well-known spots. So you kind of get an idea of where you're at. And then I did this um, kind of a storefront landscape from Montmartre and it's Le Consulat. And it's just, just down the street from Sacre-Cœur. And it's a very, very, I don't know, it's the epitome of French cafes and Anyways, it's just a lot of fun. So there's that one. And it is also still available. And I have that one in my house. So I I was able to collect a bunch of my pieces um, recently. So there's more to see if you come to the studio. Sometimes it's bare. But right now, we have quite a few things to look at. So that's kind of fun. So here's some more details from that one. And there was one more commission I wanted to show you. Maybe it didn't get in here. Did I skip it somehow? Oh, I don't know where it went, but it's so much fun. It was from Siena in Italy and I had been there. And so I knew exactly what they were asking me to paint, which was really, really fun. Um, so that was really fun. And I got to pick out some really awesome, just Tuscany colors that I thought would look good. And that was a wedding present. And that was really cool. So let's see, see if I can, oh, we're only on the second folder. Okay, let's do this next one. I'm going to go back to sharing the screen. So this one, I'm going to talk about my Heavenly Mother series. And the first Heavenly, well, one of the first Heavenly Mother paintings I did was of the Tree of Life and the Garden. And it's called Welcome Children to the Garden. Um, this particular piece was in the church um, art competition and it got to go to the church art museum. It was a lot of fun and there's a lot of special meaning within this piece. You can go check it out. But what was neat was that this went to another collector who I absolutely adore. She's again, another one of my very favorite people. When this particular piece sold, um, I went ahead and made prints of it. And so I was selling prints of it. And then somebody reached out and said, Hey, I would love a print, but I wanted something even more special. And she had seen a scarf that somebody had printed on and she was like, could you print on a scarf? So we figured it out. I found a place in San Francisco that would do it. And we found like the perfect size that would fit for her. And then we took it to Alpine Art and Frame. Oh, shoot. Where is that one? Hold on. Maybe I missed it. Okay, here it is. It's like it's skipping some of these. I apologize. I think that's so funny. Okay. So basically we took it to Alpine Art and Frame. They created this amazing Lucite, kind of like a, what do they call them? It's a Lucite box frame and they, they created their own Oh goodness. They basically created the frame of wood and then they wrapped it with linen, like almost like a linen canvas. And then they hand stitched 
the scarf into the linen and the result was just absolutely exquisite. I ended up making a couple of these. Um, and so that has been really special. So I have two collectors that have those. And so that was such a fun project. Um, oh, I don't know why it keeps doing that, but that's okay. That's okay. It's opening up somewhere else. Okay. Then going along with the Heavenly Mother series, I had some um, collectors reach out that wanted me to do similar things like the Welcome Children to the Garden or of Heavenly Mother. And so this is one of the pieces I did for my dear friend Cass. And I actually talked about this one, I believe, in the previous episode. Um, and it was a really, really special commission. There was, we picked out a lot of flowers that she loved but then also we were able to find animals that represented each family member each family member picked an animal that kind of represented their personality and their spirit and that was really fun so there's that one this is another special one i love doing this one i love the simplicity of this particular tree of life commission and she, she, I took flowers that were in her home, colors that were in her home, and just kind of planned the whole piece around the room that it was going to be in. And that was really special. And then this one, again, same idea, but we took flowers. And I think I did a whole episode on this piece for Nicole and Jonathan, but we took flowers from all the places that they've lived and visited that like were really meaningful to them. And I included them in like, they were, they're part of the tree. So the tree is blooming all these different flowers. And so that was, again, another exciting part of my journey, um, just from doing commissions, trying to figure out how to include these flowers and these, these parts of nature that wouldn't normally be on a tree. And that was really, really fun. Um, then there was lots of other symbolism. Like I said, you can check it out um, in, in that episode. I'll have to find it and link to it in the show notes. And then I've got, here's some details of that piece. So just really fun. Little baby birds. Again, all these things had meaning for their family and that was really special. And then this is an actual in situ photo. So it's their piece above their mantle. We, again, we me she measured it. She knew exactly the size of the piece. And so we made a custom board to fit in that space. And that was really fun. And you can, can kind of see it over the seasons. And that's fun too. Um, a couple more details of that particular piece. And then that piece was awesome because doing that commission really helped me. I knew that I wanted to do this heavenly mother and daughter. So heavenly mother and Eve mother, daughter portrait. I wanted to do it. And I knew for like, gosh, almost two years that I wanted to do this for this particular show for certain women. And so it was just kind of in the back of my mind and doing these commissions for Cass and for Nicole really kind of solidified where I was going to go with this piece. And so you can see that I kind of took some of the things that I learned and was able to add them. And I picked specific flowers that I felt represented um, traits of Heavenly Mother and Eve that I want to cultivate and that I want to become more like each of them. And so that was really special. So again, thank you for the, like, thanks to this you know, commission journey. I feel like I was really able to tap into exactly what, it, what I wanted to do with this piece. Here's another one with it framed. And then I'm standing next to it for scale so you can see how big it is. And this piece is actually still available. I think I've done an episode about this piece, but um, this is in my home. If you want to come see it or you want to email me and ask me more about it, I'd be happy to do that or send you videos, whatever. Okay, so that's the Heavenly Mother. Okay, the last one that I kind of want to talk about is the landscapes. So the more landscapes I did, the more commissions that I got. And again, it started to pull me in certain directions. So when I went to see my sister and my sister-in-law in England, I was able to paint from the scenes that were really close to their home. And so this is a beautiful English countryside, just um, out, I think it's just barely in the Peak District. Um, not too far from York and Manchester, but anyways, it's a beautiful, beautiful area of, of Great Britain and England in particular. And then here's another one from that trip. And this one as well is England and painting these kind of prepared me. So then when I went ahead and did the plein air thing again, 
in the summertime. The picture on the right was of Deer Creek and Deer Creek Lake. And that particular piece, the couple that bought it, um, that led to another commission and it wasn't a landscape, but it was a floral and one of the biggest florals I'd ever done. And so that was really a special thing. So it just kind of reminds me that, um, commissions don't always come from like, a direct link, if that makes sense. So this one started from a purchase of a landscape and then it morphed into the floral. So that was kind of cool. And then the one on the left, um, that particular piece was bought and it was wanted by a collector. And so because she missed out on it, she went ahead and commissioned me to do three more for each of her, I believe, daughter and daughter-in-laws. Anyways, beautiful ladies. Oh, here's the one I was trying to show you. This is the one of Sienna and it's just a tiny little wedding gift, but it was so much fun. And all those corals and mustard and the jade green, the navy. I mean, all those fun colors. Sienna is a spectacular hill town. If you've never been there, oh, it's precious. It's so great. I loved it. Okay. So here's one of the commissions that I did because of that one landscape with the fields and the barn. So these girls, they picked out the color palette and then I was able to go in and kind of personalize it for each of them. And that was really special. Then anyways, I love each one of them. A lot of fun. So there's those. And again, here's some more little details of a British, like British countryside piece. There's the full view. And then this was a really awesome commission by a dear friend. I think I've talked about it a few times on the podcast, but their family is really connected to golf courses. And so this is the Wasatch Golf Course. And then I made sure to include trees that represented um, the husband and wife and their four children. And that was really special too. And so this was a really fun piece to do because it had a lot of meaning and it reminded me that you can have portraits within landscapes. And so that was a really great discovery within the commission process as well. And then this is another fun one that I did about the same time of the snake Creek view from the Heber Valley cheese factory. And there's, there it is in the frame. Here's some details. Again, working out all the different ways that I want to portray the landscapes. Okay. So this particular one I did also during plein air and it has a tiny little hot air balloon because during the summer we get a lot of hot air balloon flights here in the Heber Valley. And one of my favorite collectors also purchased this one. And then a friend spotted it and said, oh my gosh, you need to do some more um, hot air balloons for me, but I want them to be bigger. And so we created this piece together and there's three balloons that represent each of her children, really candy color mountains that, that are the colors within their home. And that was a lot of fun. And then we've got, because of that one, her sister actually years later, she just barely commissioned me to do this one. And I love this hot air balloon. This one's a little more fancy and vintage. I had all her favorite colors. She wanted it to be rainbow. So again, just branching out, trying new things with these commissions. And I think that also all these commissions and working through these landscapes just helped me kind of refine what I wanted to portray with these. I love this one. This one's actually a pretty big one one from France. Um, but it's another oval landscape. And again, just getting, helping me be brave enough to go big with some of these pieces. You can see the shine on that one from an angle and there's that. Okay. So again, there's so many benefits to, to doing commissions, but I would say part of it for me has just been the journey. And it's just really made me a better artist because I'm willing to like take this adventure with my collectors and also take their suggestions. And it doesn't mean there's not hard times because I do get stressed out because I know they have this like particular thing that they're hoping for. And I just really want to deliver, but I'm telling you it's totally worth it. So power of commissions. It's amazing. Okay. Last thing I'm going to share a red pill and it's a quote and I'm just going to read it to you and let you do whatever you want with it. But this is a quote from Dr. Zev Zelenko. And he actually, this was pretty recent. Um, I heard it a few different places and I was like, oh, I need to share this. Okay. So this is Zev in his words. I am a conspiracy realist. BlackRock and Vanguard are the stakeholders in all industry, media, academia, and politics. Vanguard and BlackRock 
invest in each other in something called circular ownership. Thus, consider BlackRock and Vanguard a monopoly that own everything. With due diligence, you will discover that the major stakeholders of this monopoly are the Rothschild family, the DuPont family, the Rockefeller family, the Carnegie family, the Orsini, I, I know I'm saying it wrong, family, the American Bush family, and the British royal family. They use the following foundations to ferment chaos around the world. The Bill and Melinda Gates family, Soros Open Society Foundation, Clinton for the Clinton Foundation. These foundations are instrumental for geopolitical destabilization. Chaos is good for business and power acquisition. Only a divinely inspired force can overcome this Goliath. The world will be redeemed by acts of goodness and kindness. We need collective divine consciousness in order to merit divine intervention. The owners of the BlackRock Vanguard monopoly are a manifestation of the primordial serpent. I'm very optimistic about an upcoming redemptive event that will rebalance our dark world. Fasten your seatbelts and enjoy the ride. Vladimir Zev Zelenko, MD. Okay, there's so much in here. All I have to say is I agree with him. If we do our due diligence and we research these things, these are all things that I have. These are many of the rabbit holes that I have dr like dove down over the past few years. And I'm telling you, there are amazing things that you will discover if you basically do your own fact checking and go look up all of these topics. I agree with him. I believe Satan's real. I believe that he is taking over as much as he can, but I do believe that we have a savior and that there are great things upon the horizon, but I think that we have to wake up and realize what's been happening. So again, look up some of these things, circular ownership. Um, I have looked up black rock and Vanguard quite a bit. So again, there's lots of things to look into. I just invite you to check it out for yourself. See what you think. Meanwhile, go check out that episode about websites for artists and consider, you know, commissioning an art piece or consider going down the commission journey, sending so much love from the candy colored studio.